Welcome to episode two of Paige White Interviews Cambridge Graduates. Today we're going to be covering the teaching and workload at Cambridge University. How good is the teaching quality actually? Are you really working 24 seven? That's what we all wanna know, let's discuss. Did your course and the teaching quality live up to expectations? In the first few years, definitely it did. Like Cambridge is an amazing place. You're learning from like these real academics, the supervisions especially, being able to do that one-on-one -on -one teaching you don't really get at other universities and you're like meeting with people who are like actually experts in their fields and it's like it really like motivates you to do this subject. I think so mostly. One thing I hadn't really realised until I came here was that people don't get teaching positions just because they're good at teaching, it's more because they're good at research. So every so often it maybe wasn't quite to my expectations, but in general, yeah, I was quite happy with it. I think it surpassed expectations. I knew Cambridge was known for its out of this world, like professors, lecturers, I knew the courses were sort of ranked among the best of best. But when I came here, I didn't realise quite how much my professors would show respect for me as well. Obviously, being taught by the best of the best, you think they're going to appear superior or, you know, have that air of being more knowledgeable around you. But I always got the impression that my professors completely respected every idea I had. They wanted to know all of my ideas, everything I had to say. And they always encouraged, like, original thought and debate and they liked it if I challenged them and disagreed with their ideas, so I think that's what made Cambridge stand out from other universities. Cambridge teaching is kind of really varied, like some teaching is really good and some teaching is really not so good, but I'd say overall like most of my lecturers and supervisors are really quite good, uh, especially especially some supervisors like really conveyed their passion for the subject and like especially with chemistry like encouraged me to pursue chemistry because of their engaging teaching style. Oh god some of it's awful, <laughs> some of it's really good though. That's the problem, it varies a lot. It depends on the department as well. So in first year, I was doing chemistry, physics, material science. Now the material scientists and chemists are smart about it. They say, let's put our best lecturers uh, to do lecturing for the younger years to get them interested in our subject. But physics is like, let's just give it to whoever we like. And you end up with some really bad lecturers who just don't care and are more interested in whatever their project group is doing. Generally, when you specialise, the things you're learning about are so specialist that only the person who's really into that uh, topic can lecture it. And sometimes, they don't know how to lecture, so it's just a problem you're going to run into. It's kind of unavoidable, but it's pretty good overall. They give you a lot of attention, I guess, because those supervisions are really good. You have, you have like, one supervisor, two or three people within that supervision. Definitely, but also sadly, it was interrupted a lot by strikes. My two favourite terms of teaching were interrupted by strikes, which was really sad um, because in English you don't actually have much faculty based teaching, so most of it's done independently or in your supervision. So, those two terms that were like more faculty based, where I'd meet people from other colleges and hear ideas from new people, they were interrupted, so that was a little bit sad. But other than that, it was great. I would definitely say in third year, the teaching quality was very good from lecturers. I can reel off a few uh, Bill Nolan and Sally Boss, very good. In fourth year, about 50 50 good lecturers to bad lecturers. A lot of the problems I had in fourth year was actually understanding firstly what they'd said and what it meant and getting mm -hmm. that information from supervisors. Most of the time it did stand up to quality but sometimes it wasn't okay. I'd say. How would you compare the workload to what you had when you were at school? A lot more, <laughs> a lot more. I think it's kind of hard to underestimate it. You can say a lot of people will talk about like how Cambridge is different from school but I don't think you really appreciate it until you actually get there and actually like do like four subjects in your first year and have like four supervisions, 12 lectures a week. I think it's only then when you really, when it really sets in that Cambridge is a lot of work. A lot more. I remember at school, at least for like A-levels, realising that basically if I really knuckled down in school, I wouldn't really need to do any homework. I could just mm. switch to those little old school hours. It wasn't like that here, it was pretty full on I found. <laughs> a lot more work done here. It's kind of hard because at school especially, like the workload is what you put into it, like throughout most of the year. Apart from like homework assignments and stuff, you're not, 
I mean, in my experience, at least, I'm not. You're not really revising throughout the year like you are here. So at school, like when it comes to like, exam season, is when you start really revising heavily. And around that time, it was probably doing a fairly similar workload to a typical normal term time at Cambridge. But here, like during the whole time, you have to be keeping up on supervision work, lab reports, with a, like an eye head to exams, thinking about starting to revise for that. So imagine constant <laughs> exam season. Yeah, <laughs> that, it's like being at school, but exams all the time. As it goes on, you kind of realise that supervisors don't really care that much and you can get away with like just doing what you think you need to do that helps you the best and you kind of learn that you want to, you need to just like manage your time so you put in the time that you think the question deserve and you can get the most out of it but in first year you know you like rewriting questions to make your handwriting look nice and stuff <laughs> again with english it's really up to you so you could have done like 20 hours a week and just about scraped by um but i probably did more like 40 hours a week it's obviously more than A level, I'd say, or about the same as A level, if you think about it. Yeah, probably about the same as A level, to be honest, when you count like homework and stuff. Yeah, depends on how hard you work. And then, yeah, I work quite hard at A level, so I'm a little nerd, so. Well, I, I just used to stay in school until everything was done, then like go home, so that's kind of how I, I would do it. It was, it's definitely harder, like a lot more work than school, a lot more like out of hours so like you like you know you're nine to five you need to do a little bit more than that i think anyone could do it really just put the put the hours in i don't necessarily think uh it's too hard it just requires a lot of a lot of work a lot of grind it was definitely a lot more intense than at school because school is very set hours you sort of start at 9 a.m and you might finish at like half three four o'clock right but when it comes to university, you sort of make your own hours. Obviously you have planned like lectures, supervision, seminars in your timetable for you, and they will tend to happen between the hours of nine and five. But after that, it's up to you to go away and do extra research, revision. I'd say it is what you make it, but at Cambridge, there is definitely a lot of pressure to do more or above average. And if you're someone like me, and I think you as well, where you like put a lot of pressure on yourself to do well, you will just work and work and work and do maybe more than what's expected of you. And I always felt, I always say this when people ask me, I never felt like the pressure was coming from my professors. If anything, they were telling me to calm down. It was me that was like pushing myself <laughs> to work more and do crazy hours. But I never worked late at night. I was never like, will leaving to go to the yeah. library at like midnight did the workload change as you progress through your course i think so yeah but also i think the amount that i was working still stayed roughly the same i did what i felt i could do mm -hmm. so i didn't notice that much when the workload itself changed i mean within a year you obviously got the change from going to exam season and stuff which is you know it's quite dramatic but here because of the super how the way supervisions work you're kind of doing a constant level of work throughout the degree because you have to hand in the supervision work so when it comes to exam season it's not too much of a jump from the from the previous terms i feel like in first year a lot of people are trying out societies and stuff so they might not do as much work and then you know final year is when you really like people start to buckle down and i think the workload definitely got more intense as i went through so like my first year i was learning for three exam papers and then in my second year it was just two pieces of coursework content wise it was very similar across across those two years but when i got to third year I was doing both exam like papers and study at the same time as doing my dissertations and they were both layered on top of each other so the way we described it was like doing first and second year both at once so it definitely got more intense but it never felt more intense because you just sort of like gradually up your yeah. level of work yeah i'd say that generally the workload got lighter <laughs> like as i kind of specialized into more what i was interested in there was less of it and i was kind of more used to the cambridge work style so it kind of felt like less there was less daunting to like, get started with and it was also kind of specialized into areas that i was particularly interested in the work got more enjoyable it was like interesting to learn about my chosen subjects in like more depth yeah i definitely would say so because uh, you're, you're so broad in first year that you kind of have to work in a different way because one day you're doing physics next minute or whatever you're doing materials chemistry and maths whereas uh, when you get into your later years you're very much focused on one subject and you can kind of change your working regime around that and everything's a bit more synergistic with how you revise it so yeah it, it did change a lot less hours i'd say like i spent learning something in fourth year as opposed to first year no, fourth year was that easy, I would have stayed. <laughs> no, but I got better at managing it. I was working as effectively as I was in first year and third year, but doing like 10 hours less a week. The most intense year was second year because I was split between three departments when usually people are split between two at that point. 
I was doing like a half physics, half chemistry, and material science. And that meant I was just jumping all over the place, expected to know a wide variety of different things at that point, I think. And it was a lot. That was definitely my most intense year. When I specialised, it came a bit easier. Uh, especially because the department I was going into was quite chill. Yeah, I actually found the third and fourth year the easier two years. More enjoyable as well. It becomes more focused on coursework, like project stuff, like actually like finding a thing you're interested in and researching it. What made a good lecturer or supervisor? I think the best lecturers and supervisors were really engaging. The lectures that stand out to me most are the ones that were funny or that I came away with a little story like, oh, this professor brought a prop to use and it was really funny because we didn't expect it or they played a video clip in the lecture rather than just talking at us in terms of like supervisions rather than just sitting in a lecture hall again like a professor that encouraged I don't know debate or like really listen to my ideas I loved all of my supervisors Aww. and professors they were all just really nice people I think that helps too being encouraging all the time and like whilst giving constructive criticism they would always still give us lots and lots and lots of positive feedback and praise and I think you need that especially at Cambridge with imposter syndrome everybody mm. needs to be told they're doing well or the time. Shout out to Emma's supervisor. Yeah, they're so nice. <laughs> I'd say a few different things. Interest in their in what they're teaching. So some lecturers in Cambridge are like are primarily researchers and might be teaching like especially in earlier years they might be teaching areas that perhaps they're not directly researching and so perhaps they're less enthusiastic and that can sometimes come across. However on the other hand you also get lecturers who are teaching subjects that, and courses that are cl really clearly quite enthusiastic about and this really often comes across in the teaching. I'd say as well like a very methodical approach is kind of makes a good lecturer or supervisor one who doesn't kind of like rush around all over the place and like glossing over important points just say no it's it's trivial it's easy you should easily be able to see this <laughs> it's like where you where they realize that perhaps you're seeing this material for the first time and they approach it like slowly and in a logical way probably just people who can actually explain and teach things clearly who know that you don't know things and that it's all new content to the students and can kind of slowly go through everything and make it seem obvious to someone who doesn't know it all in advance and can get in that frame of mind. Do you want to shout out your favourite lecturer? Oh, I mean, there were some great ones to choose from. I love those Stafford Withington. What a man. Oh, yeah. What a man. <laughs> oh. What made a good lecturer or supervisor? The best supervisor I had was Matthew, the one you had, Ginger Matthew. He was so good, Matthew yeah. Smith. Um, the reason he works so well was because he really knew the content and he really knew how to mark your work. So you'd hand something in and he would give corrections which were understandable and really made sure you understood where and how you went wrong. The weaker supervisors were ones who didn't really look too hard at what you'd done with that supervision work. So you were kind of forced to kind of pick up the pieces and figure out a bit more like where you'd actually gone wrong. A good lecturer, and I guess it's a bit similar, someone who just really knows the course, can explain it concisely, can answer questions well when you need them, when you have them. Good notes is also important. I think like legible and understandable uh, lecture course notes are really uh, useful. Yeah. Some courses would just like give you like the the, cor the the presentation they give for the lecture would just be PowerPoint slides and they'd give you that as the notes and they're always useless because <laughs> there's just some pictures and some bullet points just like I, what is what does this mean? So I did like um, like good detailed diagrams and descriptions and, and notes. That's always good. Definitely someone with empathy, someone who actually wants to get to know you as well mm -hmm. because like if you're spending an hour a week and you don't have like the little how were you day how was your week how was rowing that kind of chat at the beginning makes the vibes a little bit off most people would say a good supervisor is one who like knows the subject and can actually teach but no they need not, to be a nice person yeah they too. don't want to get to know you or yeah. they just want to do that hour and don't care about you in the time that you're not there mm -hmm. that can really impact it lecturers Again, like it's more about the content of the lecture. If it's something new and exciting, that's great. We had like 10 lectures on the same play during Shakespeare term. And at that point I was just like, why am I here? Mm -hmm. um, no matter how engaging that lecture was, the content wasn't new. Yeah, cool ideas that go, huh, new ways of thinking, new angles of thinking, that kind of thing, really cool. Yeah. The best supervisors I had were the ones that pushed us the most. So we kind of agreed before and like we've done like the a lot of supervision questions and we understand the content on that course and then they would 
come up with um, new ways to test us on the content and develop our fundamental principles of the course itself. The supervisors that like pushed us came up with like new uh, new questions, new ideas for us that went beyond the scope of the course, and that's it's very hard to do. Not many supervisors that I had did that. I'd say one or two. Well, Dr. Wallace was a great lecturer because at the end of the term, he just he set fire to loads of explosive chickens. So you know that that was quite a highlight. So pretty good. If your lecturer does that, I think you're you've won. <laughs> the most annoying lecturers were the ones who were disorganised and like didn't get to the end of their content by the end of the course, and they're just like, oh yeah, we have loads of more to cover, but. <laughs> You have to learn that outside of lectures because we don't have time. <laughs> and that was the most annoying part. My favourite supervisor was in first year, this chemistry supervisor called Dr. Hill, because even though he was like kind of intimidating, like you had him too. Did you yeah, have that's him too? a really interesting choice. <laughs> I, I love Dr. Hill, like even though he was quite intimidating and he was like very strict with like the supervision work had to be good quality, deadlines and stuff. He was like, if you got on his bad side, he was intimidating, but he was like kind of just like the epitome of what a Cambridge supervisor feels like to me you know he's like proper academic like really smart every supervision he would like drink tea out with his like Chinese tea cup yes. which he got from like his travels abroad he could like speak fluent, fluent Mandarin and stuff every time I left his supervisions I was just like really passionate again about chemistry he was a theoretical chemist so he's probably what made me specialize in that sort of area yeah I mean also I had Will as my supervision partner <laughs> and it was just great because Will would just whatever Dr. Hill asked Will would answer the first thing that came to his mind so I mean, sometimes he was right, and that's fine. But sometimes we would just we would just keep talking, and I had the chance to sit there and think about it. And then, I, as soon as I thought the answer, I could be like, "Actually, it's this." Then I look really, I look really good. So, thank you, Will. So it's time for Paige's answer and roundup. You are being taught by people at the forefront of the field. It wasn't uncommon for your lecturer to have written the textbook. And teaching is not easy, it's a big skill. We had some mixed opinions from my friends on the workload, but personally speaking, I found it way more than I had at school. Or rather, the amount of work was about the same, but it was just way more challenging. You could spend hours and hours staring at a question sheet with just six questions on it. And I think a good supervisor encouraged participation. Even if it was uncomfortable, supervisors who put me on the spot in a safe environment where I wasn't going to be judged if I got the question wrong, they were the people who I'm most grateful for during my degree because they made me learn so much. Anyway, that rounds up our views on the teaching and workload at Cambridge. Comment down below if you have any further questions or if you're at uni too how have you found your lecturers what do you think makes a good lecturer give the video a like subscribe to the channel share it with your friends if you find it useful and we'll see you next time with another episode of page y interviews cambridge graduates bye